Carl, would you rather be a witch or a twin? I think I would rather be a twin. Okay, trick question. You'll be burned at the stake for that one. So that's <laughs> sorry about that. You've been you've been burned at the stake. My name's Oscar. My name's Carl. And and this is who, who would watch this. this. Welcome to Who Would Watch This, the podcast where we watch a film, chat about the film, and try and figure out who would watch this. Today we're talking about Twitches, which currently has a 60% on Rotten Tomatoes, a 3.1 on Letterboxd, and a 5.7 on IMDb. Oscar, what's the plot? Twin witches who are separated at birth and were adopted by two different families meet on their 21st birthday and must use their powers to save the world in which they are born, where their mother... God, no, no comma. Give me... God, just give me something. Where their birth mother still lives. Holy heck. Carl, have you seen this one? No, never heard of it you until never, you brought it up. That's crazy. In a panic stew, we were sort of like, oh my God, we've got to record the podcast. And I went, Carl, you've never seen Twitches. Get this. Imagine you've got, uh, not Mean Girls. What's the other Lindsay Lohan film where she's twins? Parent Trap. The Parent Trap, but they're witches. And you were like, I am sold. It was a great pitch. Yeah. It was a really good pitch. I, I think I was pitching... Um, not how to get away with murder too. I know what you did. I still know what you did last summer. We were and you were like, uh, no, no, I could. I don't want to touch that. Yeah. We also tossed up Smurfs, and we both just went, oh, God, yeah. I just can't do. Smurfs. And neither of us wanted to go to the cinema. No, to watch Red One. God, we so are, we're at Twitch. Here's the thing: I want to give Dwayne money. I just don't know how. I'd rather he steal candy money. from me as a baby. Yes, it's easier that way. Carl, before we jump in, we were meant to do last week, but again, a panic. We were in a panic. So uh, right now, sometimes. When life gets in the way, you buy lemons. You buy lemons. That's the thing. Lemons give you life or something shit like that. Carl, who do we think is going to watch it? Here's just a little teaser, I guess. Yeah, okay. I guess so. <laughs> Having Give seen... half your who would watch this okay, now and you get right. the rest. This thing, you've enticed if, them. You've enticed the audience. I hadn't seen the movie, I would assume... People that frankly love the pitch of the parent trap with witches, which I think is gold. It has gold. admits it's, it's gold. the only is here's the thing. This is how I've convinced you to watch the movie. Yeah. Which is not like who would watch this, just how was I convinced? How was I tricked? <laughs> how was I fooled? <laughs> was it a good foolery? Do you feel it lived up to the expectations of that? The I mean, now we're just getting into the egg end segment if we We can't do this. Alright, okay. Carl, let's jump into Twitches, huh? No, okay, here's if pre this is this is me if I had not seen the film. Yes. Do 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 do. Who do I think would watch this? Mm. Kids. You nailed Oscar, it. who do you think would watch this? I gotta tell you. Make sure to do a noise so people know it's a. Uh, well, you've already, you've already done the noise. Do 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 do. Do you think that's our noise? No. Would well, I don't know. know. <laughs> I haven't edited in a while. <laughs> okay, Carl. Here's the noise. Here's the actual noise. <clears throat> uh, I also think children will watch this. Carl, should we jump into Twitches? Okay, well, rip me off. <laughs> See if you do that at the end of the podcast as well. And no doubt. <laughs> we're bitter, and that's why we're in the good mood for Twitches. Mm. They're a bit bitchy. They're girls. Mm. They're having fun. Yeah. We're bitter witches. Bitches. Oh, Carl. But witches? Yes, there we go. You're oh. back in a big way. I gotta tell you right now, this is off topic. Actually, it's a little bit on topic because it's witches. I love Bewitched. Is, which one's Bewitched? Is that Sabrina? The, is she, no, it's Sabrina? the teenage witch. Okay. Bewitched so, is the one that wiggles her nose. Oh, wait. Has, is that like, the one with Will, is Will Ferrell on a broomstick? That's the, the movie. movie version. Yes. But that's a, it's weird because okay. that's that one. I think I've talked about it on the podcast before, but that's the one where Will Ferrell is starring in the remake of of Bewitched mm -hmm. and he's made it more about his character not realising the actual witch which Bewitched is based on is, has been cast as the lead whoa that's a fun <laughs> idea very meta but very and yeah nobody everybody was like this is so intensely meta for no reason what's the what's what's a day to day episode of uh, Bewitched oh I'm cranky at the neighbours because uh, their hedges are too high. Mm -hmm. I'm going to magic them down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Uh, it made their car small. Yeah. We need to fix this issue before they get home. Yeah. And together as a household and using some of her magical relatives, they do it. Gotcha. Get a lot of sort of like curb enthusiasm mm. vibes. And I think that's the one where I can't remember if it's I Dream a Genie or Bewitch. They're basically the same thing, but <laughs> one's a genie and one's a witch. Crazy that and I the, think the, they the, crossed. The, the mold was just like, well, we'll have a magic woman and she will do things in the house. Crazy it did so well. Gangbusters. And it was like sort of a wimpy comedic man. Yeah. They're really good. <laughs> um, I owned all seasons of Bewitched on DVD. Get out of here. Yeah. Why? All, uh, like, yeah, all of them. You've never brought this up. Have I not? Never. I loved cereals. I loved them. Have I not talked about this? I was no. a massive fan of like Dick Tracy and Sherlock Holmes. Do you know what a cereal is? 
Oh, like a little book? No, like the movie thing that used to play pre a full film. No, it hit me. I mean, well, I, like a little short. Yeah, like so little... there were like these little. It was like, um, like almost like a little mini piece of ep- of an episode mm-hmm. would used to be before a full movie. Yes, back in the so it'd be like trailers and then uh, a cartoon and then a serial. Yeah, and then the feature presentation. That's why it comes up saying the feature presentation. Yes. Uh, so if you kept going each week to the or each couple of weeks to the new feature presentation, mm-hmm. you'd get the rest of the serial that ended on a cliffhanger. Wow! So it would get you regardless of if you wanted to see the feature presentation. How are you consuming the, these serials? Were so they, well, they the, were on. My dad just bought so many of them for me. Yeah, because they were cheap. Were they like on, a go they, low. Oh, that's correct. Were they on a little CD like a like a GameCube? No, still on like a DVD. Okay, so they but, could have put them all on one. Yeah. so you could have watched the film. Yeah. Do you want? I don't, get I, you don't some? Want, I don't want your I can DVDs. get you some. I don't want your DVDs. My dad will bring him to Sydney. It's fine. He'd happily do it. No, it's fine. I don't want little... I've, here's the yeah. thing. You're just explaining essentially what I do now yeah. on TikTok is watching a whole film <laughs> in little segments. I love watching... I'm watching... What's that Mel Gibson one where he's uh, can read people's minds? Women's minds. Oh, uh, what women want. I'm watching that whole thing on TikTok over a two-week mm. span. It's great stuff. Let's get into Twitch as He now, really Kel. knew... He really knew. Well, yeah, no, Dodoy, don't spoil it, okay? I'm still getting up to it. <laughs> Carl, let's get into Twitches. Guys, there's two babies. <laughs> They're twins. They're dropped off at a castle. Mm. Then two people enter as darkness is descending, mm-hmm. and they pick them up weird. Mm. They both pick them up under, like, the, I don't know, picking up, like, a desk? Sort of like a desk. Imagine you both got an Ikea uh, desk. You both go, let's lift each side. But then both of you grab the opposite side. Yeah. So now you're going to get your fingers clawed mm. around the other and side. And you swap them. Yes. It was. It, I, why'd they do that? Is Was they putting a spell on it or did they just act weird? Here's the thing. Comedy is in, uh, in thrills here and it's good stuff. Okay? It's a rule of threes. Yeah. It'd be great if they couldn't pick up anything <laughs> the rest of the film. All luggage, all tables, all desks, everything. You just struggle. You just. It'd be tough. Uh, we're off to a great start because that to me is great physical comedy. Yeah. Right out the gate. Some of the comedy in this one sort of... Uh, Works. Works. <laughs> Some doesn't, but that's fine. A lot it? doesn't. A lot doesn't. But are we going to shout them out now? We might as well. You've oh, already segued. On. Go on, go on. Here's the thing. One person runs away with the film, and her name is... Is Jennifer Robertson, and she plays Elena. The, she, she's, she's the sort of... Uh, I don't know how you explain these people. The fairy odd parents mm, of the twins. Yeah. She's sort of the one assigned to, I think, the rich one or the poor one. You decide. She is a star. She's a star. Anytime she's on screen, it's great. She is elevating the material. And I was so happy to see that she has had a fruitful career and is on Ginny and Georgia and, and Shit's Creek. Creek. Yes. Good for her. And uh, here's the thing. She blo- it's just on screen. It's good stuff. She does. And I just think she, I, she's just doing, she's doing great gags. Mm. She's playing off everyone really well. She is a cut above the material mm. and a cut above everybody else in the film. That's every sure. little beat, every like moment, she's like, okay, I need to get from A to B. Guess what? I'm going to take my, I'm going to chew this scenery and nail it. Yeah. Constantly, she's using stuff with her hands. She's going off, eating little cupcakes. <laughs> it works. Oh, when I, she's stealing the cupcakes? She paints a character and love it's her. love. It's yeah. great stuff other than that everyone's doing eh oh yeah we'll get to the performances later but big smoke is chasing them around yes. and they get separated yes or do they separate them on purpose they separate them on purpose however they go let's go to two different universes mm. they both end up in d- t- toronto so uh, <laughs> a bit unlucky there but hey that's yeah fine. weird to put them into the same city I think this was a mishap or a budgetary constraint. Either way. It's, it's got to be both. They both say we can go to any universe, so pretty bonkers to it's go here. It's definitely them walking and being like, there's been a mishap. We have a budgetary constraint. <laughs> <laughs> we do not have two locations. Quite frankly, this house is going to double up as both the houses. The assistant director just set the budget on fire. We don't know why. God, what a mishap. We had $40 billion, and that's a shame. That's a big shame. This was going to be Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Cams was attached to Twitches. Here's the thing. It's a good thing. He just got off the abyss so you know he had to jump onto twitches you know he was looking for twitches but he landed on true lies yeah. he, was, he was in his comedy era <laughs> he, god that jimmy cams is funny um we now fast forward yeah 21 years yeah right yes yeah crazy they're playing 21 year olds it feels like the the, the role has been written for kids i it always throws me because always it's 25 year olds playing 16 year olds so it's odd they've gone well they're 21 and they're about 24 so you can't go <laughs> oh, you've, you cast well which is odd for a disney but they're film. all still 
So I guess they're not living at home. I just, in my head, the one that's poor, basically they separate them into poor and rich. Yeah, uh, like as- you should. And that's that's <laughs> right. This podcast stands by that. Unlike in The Parent Trap, where one of them gets to live in the most beautiful winery ever. Oh, and the yeah. the other just- one gets the richest life in London. <laughs> it's, <laughs> they both have such beautiful lives. God, they're different, but they're both pure. Yeah. One lives in a mansion. One lives... God, in squalor. Well, there's a good, um, I think there's a really good pitch in doing one that's like a horror version where one of them's living the most disgusting, intense, violent life mm-hmm. and swaps with somebody living a fantastic life. Yeah. And then the other one just goes into full torture with their family. Well, it's just kind of why swap, really, at that point. Like a Christian family put well, some hippies. God, hijinks and Is that what they do? Do you not see in wife swap? I thought they just do Christian to Christian. No, no, no. They always go for opposites. So, you, I mean, the classics like a messy and a dirty family, but some are like military and some are just like, uh, sometimes we do like, we blow up like military bases. It's very odd. How many times has the wife not wanted to come back? Has that happened in a few episodes or do they always swap back? They always swap back. They normally learn something, but normally on camera. So if it's a military <laughs> family, it's just like, well, I learned that. I don't have to be the one to do all the chores and I can be a bit less strict. And the the hippie one's like, well, we learned that sometimes order is quite nice. Uh, and you just know they go back to their ways. Uh, and it's always a vibe that they were kind of swinging. They always kind of push that on you. Just like, you guys just Like fuck. the secret lives of Mormon wives. Yes. Oh, it's topical. We're so topical. God, we're good. We're off by a bit. <laughs> <laughs> we're a few weeks late. No, no, surely not. Not this podcast. Yeah. Anyway, they're having, the, they're having their birthday. We get a little sneak peek of their powers. One of them has the <laughs> has such a crappy power, which mm. is she can correctly guess about a second into the future. Yes. Which is just enough to annoy the shit out of everyone. <laughs> Constantly. She's like, you're going to get that phone? He's like, what? And it rings. And in that time of the watch, he's just, you just see that pain in his face going, you just, just, what, what is the point of this? It hurts me. It hurts me. The parents come in with a cake and she turns around and goes, surprise to them. Mm. And I'm like, why'd you ruin it? It's cruel. It's cruel. It's, they put in the what effort. Does, what does this uh, power look like to to this witch? Does, can she, when she wants, choose the moment? Or is it sort of like a force upon you, like a spidey sense? I just think she knows to do it whenever it's going to annoy her dad. Oh, yeah. Which is just great 21-year-old behavior. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows at 21, you go home and you just, you, you berate your dad. You make him go insane. You kind of freak them out you know with like sort of mental uh, tactics 21's the age you punish your parents for letting them have you oh yeah exactly you've grown up and now finally I mean here's the thing it's, it's a downward slope until they go into a home mm. and you know you're gonna make it you're gonna rinse them dry 21's my favourite year of life I couldn't have been less thankful to everything they gave to me and I asked for the most amount of money <laughs> <laughs> so she spoils the fact that they've come in with a cake yeah now I'm gonna point this out about their two lives mm-hmm. both of them get given a cake in these opening sequ- mm-hmm. these sequences when we get to meet them The parents have only put one candle on each. Do they own more candles? Why only one candle? I think one candle is strong. I think uh, at a certain age, it gets a bit ridiculous, that amount of candles. I think it can be... You don't have to do that many. No, no, no. Just do a few. Fuck off. No, I want the amount of candles for my birth. And past, I don't know, I'd say... 13, it's getting ridiculous. Now, comedically wise, if you're like 55, you put 55 candles there, that's comedy. In this middle ground, it's nothing. You what, got, so what are the two ages then? When do you stop? When do you start again 13 for 13 and 55. Oh, for comedy? Yeah. Listen, the older you get, the funnier it gets. Mm. I'm saying it peters off about... I'd say it'd be weird to start at 32. <laughs> You'd be a bit like, oh, it's kind of funny. But like, I'm talking the comment. Like, you want 55 30, candles. 32 is also not fun to be like, did you count how many I put on the cake? Yes. Like, but at 55, that's a lot to that's count. A lot, there's that's a lot. 55 seconds. That's exactly. To yeah. count. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, that's how You got to count them in Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> One Mississippi candle, two Mississippi candles. Also, when you blow up the candle, you got to lick your fingers and tap them like that at 55. It's hideous. It really makes the cake Because there's no air left in the lungs. Oh, no, exactly. You're haggard. I mean, your child. <laughs> child's been bullying you for 34 <laughs> years so of course you have no air in your lung you have nothing else to give Carl. i just think it's like that the parents have gotten up early mm. they've gone to the trouble of getting her a cake to begin the day which yeah. i think is ludicrous is it only in films when parents are like the day has begun for your birthday so you get a cake now i think you can get a, 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 a sort of celebratory cake but you would never consume the cake in the morning 
No. Yeah. That's save a that's save a Christmas when you can have. When was the last time you got a cake at the beginning of the birthday? Day? I ate a cake uh, maybe three days ago for uh, dinner the last day, and then I woke up at breakfast. So I'm that, I'm just an anomaly though. You but know, was I'm, that yeah. given to you with a candle on it? No, no, it was given to me with this comical amount of candles. <laughs> I don't know about thirty six, and it just didn't land. But I ate the whole thing over three day course. Uh, Do you reckon anyone's invented a candle that once you light it on fire, the candle will? Drip, but it's edible, so it ices the cake. Carl, shut the fuck up. We're gonna sub- you know what we're gonna be doing tonight. <laughs> is <laughs> this is podcast- that good? I think that works. I, I think, think that's that works. good. Right? I think that works. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, no. I think it would. Re- yeah, edible wax. Yeah. Shit. To ice the cake. Yes, yes. You'd need. I think a lot of candles. But ironic, that's what's great. Ironic. From 55 up. What can I say? That's too much icing. No, I because think. then you can't, then you get to age into something that's fun for the first time in your life. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Past 13, it's all downhill. It's all downhill. It's imagine just that, bills. You age that, into more bills. Imagine that 14 mid puberty. It's it just ended all now, buddy. Oh my God. You, you don't deserve any candles. I was at my worst when I was 14. <laughs> <laughs> So these gals, they've got powers. One can turn back time. What can the other one do? I couldn't really tell you. It feels weird only one of them really got powers. I gotta tell you, one of them seems to have powers. The other one just seems to be mopey. Yeah. <laughs> one of them's drawing a lot. Actually, no, that's the rich one as well. Yeah. She's been given everything in life. Like, the rich always are. That's right. <laughs> that's what kind of podcast we are now. Uh, so, so then we go to, <laughs> then we go to the poor... The port, which is... Uh, yeah, she's not having a birthday party for 100 no. people. You know what I loved as well as I mentally wrote down, they were like, we've, we're, they're playing tennis, they go, tonight we're planning a party for 100 people. Mm. And I just went, I just put down, I said, they can't afford 100 extras. Let's see if they can pull it <laughs> off. They don't. They don't. The party has 11. I love it. Constantly they're just like, hey, you're only talking that quiet corridor where the party ambiance is over there behind that corner. <laughs> I can tell you right now, ambiance is a lot cheaper than 20 people. <laughs> Uh, People can keep entering the fame going, you're missing a raging <laughs> party. There's got to be a hundred and or more. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to peek behind this corner. Do not go back here, though. It's just too hectic. You'll love it. You'll love it. Uh, so their two guardians start to try and force them to come back together. Yes. Now it's time for them to meet mm. to help save the world. Yes. I think this is where we find out that potentially the guy is a bit of a creep. Oh, you're the fairy odd parent as a bit of a creep? Now, why yeah. is that? Uh, he's watched her grow, mm-hmm. uh, and he's just sitting on a bus staring at her. Yeah. It's uncomfortable. It's intimate, uh, and he's also wearing weird robes. And that's not an indication that you're a creep, but I don't know. A, 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 a robe is a lot. Yeah. You know? What are you hiding under there? Of course. It's usually less clothes. Yes. That's why it's upsetting. Were those things back in the day? I remember talking to uh, my parents-in-law, and they said they used to have an old like stripper that did that that sort of things at the park, and it was less of a creepy thing and just more what a street like a, a flasher a, like a flasher like, but proper trench coat like like a cliche movie like that actually happened. Wow. Yeah. What do people get off with flashing? Um, I think I think that they've made people uncomfortable. I think right. Oh, how upsetting! What an upsetting kink. We all knew it was unsettling. <laughs> yeah, well, this was, the entry point. What well, you, you look at that and go, "Well, that's upsetting." Well, I just thought. I thought maybe there <laughs> well, would you be. Think there was, there's no malice behind that. I thought there'd be grounds to an end. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe it would be like. Uh, I know. need to do this to save my wife. You know, sort of that sort of thing. You know. Yeah. What if there's been an eagle eyed? Yeah, exactly. Seeing an exposed penis, you go, "Well, now, thank God, the cure for cancer. Mm. I've got it in my brain." No, they're just getting mm. off, and they're normally, you know. A bit mentally gone. But like, what if, what if in Eagle Eye, Shia LaBeouf was like, we're going What's to kill- Eagle Eye? What's Eagle Eye? It's a very niche. Don't dip. pretend like you haven't seen I Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye. Don't got- pretend you, you haven't seen Eagle Eye. You can't bring up these random films. Like, Don't oh, pretend that film. you haven't seen Eagle Eye. <laughs> What's the plot of Eagle it's Eye? It's a banger of a film. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like Shia LaBeouf exposed himself for Produced 20- Produced by Michael minutes. Bay. Mm. Here's the concept. <laughs> there is an Eagle Eye and it controls everyone and everything. Mm. And you get a phone call and it's like, you've got to go do this thing. Mm-hmm. And it's like an AI is telling you what to do. Mm-hmm. And then if you don't do it, bad things are going to happen to you. And it trickles through until they're told they have to assassinate the president. Mm-hmm. Wow, chills. That's actually pretty great. It's excellent. Now, Haven't it, seen them many years. Mm-hmm. Don't think I liked it when I saw it. Gotcha. <laughs> Did someone expose themselves? Was that one of the time? I'm just saying, wouldn't it be crazy if Eagle Eye called and was like, you need to expose yourself for a brief moment in a park. You and could then have keep used the example phone boofed, okay? And everyone would have got that reference. That? It's when Colin Firth or Colin Hanks or Colin Farrell, Farrell is in a phone booth and told to do things, okay? He's just told to fly. <laughs> just get your clothes off or I'm going to snipe you. Okay, and stand there a 
bit. <laughs> it's a great flick. You gotta check it out. Anyway, these gals are living their best life. We've now seen poverty and we've seen uh, excess wealth. And quite frankly, excess wealth is, seems to be winning in my aspirations. <laughs> That's uh, the life I would pick. Oh, 100%. It's great seeing wealth from a 2000s perspective, isn't I it? I love it. I just think wealth's a bit different now, but I think I love the sort of, I'm going to get a child, a Porsche. Mm. And that was just... That was just insane. No one had ever done that. And it became like a thing that happened in every piece of children's media and everything for a spoiled child. And I don't know where it's gone. I don't know what, I don't know what like a, a very rich child's doing now. Like in media. I couldn't tell you what like a telltale sign is. I think it's a bit more quiet now. Yeah, that's why they just give them cravats. You've, what children's content do they give them cravats? I haven't seen Heartbreak High. Maybe that's the whole plot. It's whatever you just said. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, he's got me there. Anyway. Now, Heartstopper. All the rich kids at Heartstopper wear cravats. That's crazy. Kit Connor and Joe Luck rock a cravat. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, look at them. Wealth, a very cheap piece. The, ch- the cheapest piece of clothing you can really get, really. I know. It's, it's barely a, a, a napkin. But they look like they should be going out to sea. <laughs> they intersect they at the clothing make, store. Yes, again, Wealth is on display. She's shopping. She's looking for a job. For a $600 dress. Yeah. She's looking for a job. I love it in movies where they get given the job, but like you you start now. Yeah. <laughs> Every single job I've done at that like retail level, you have to go through just like a bullshit week of just absolute nothing. You're just like, well, you've got to go to a random building and chat to a bunch of new people. And you're going to do uh, sort of work exercises just to see how you're vibing. And then we're going to send you to the storefront. No knowledge. I usually have plans. You know, it's like if you go in for, for a job interview and they're like, great, can you start now? You're like, well, no, I've got plans. I've got lots of plans. I've got the rest of the day ahead of me. Yeah. So what are you on about? You're a notch on my belt of the day ahead. You told me two to three. And, you know, I could have other job interviews. Mm. You lined up. I could. I could. So, so. Well, I'm getting paid more money. Yeah. I could. Let's just have more offers. And this job at Ikea you know, might want to, you know, haggle a bit for me. I won't take anything less than a Swedish $100,000. <laughs> you fucking fool. That's a Portuguese 60. <laughs> <laughs> to be paid a Portuguese 60. <laughs> Damn, what a life. Anyway. The, uh, the taxes they evade by Ikea paying their staff in here's Portuguese the thing, the Swede, dollars. The Swedes to Portuguese, the, our money laundering from Australia to Swedes to Portugal. It's a feral little system. And quite frankly, by the end result, we're left penniless. The amount of Brits that come to Australia not realising we use Portuguese dollars <laughs> is insane. And you simply need to grow up and understand how the modern world works. It's funny because Portugal doesn't use the euro. So they're very confused why we ganked their name. Mm, not anymore. They've got American dollars. <laughs> <laughs> they're invading as we speak uh, So once they meet yes. They're pretty quick to be like We look identical I don't think they look that identical No I, I mean maybe because just different hair <laughs> But it is But it is crazy They're full all in Just like hey Well we're probably sisters So we should probably you know we should work out what the hell this is. Well, We've I... probably got powers too. <laughs> I mean, do you have that weird one second time thing? Yeah, too. Okay, why well, draw? So <laughs> so we're probably... That's both the same person. Yeah. What does the, the poor other one... one mopes? Oh, of course she does. She's poor. They're a mopey witch. I'm mopey. I'm They're very a mopey. Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> They're a mopey. <laughs> but wouldn't but they're not even because what powers they get? I feel like the rich one just kind of uses it as like a vessel or like a like a like a like a gemstone, you know, like a soul stone. As someone's never been rich, I just assume rich people have this power. Maybe, oh, I think yeah. maybe this is. I think the. I think maybe she get, she just has a regular rich person power to see a second into the future. Yeah, and then when they hold hands, they both get their actual powers, which is slowing down things and turning machinery on. Yes, they they strip clothes on the mannequins a bit. Do you. Yeah. One of the things that's about like a Disney movie is you'd think the powers that they get would be really fun ones that intoxicate a child to be like, I wish I had powers like that. Yeah. But I don't think they're given very good powers. I think they're given the cheap powers because they're like, okay, well, you can't do any CGI. Uh, we've got one paint can that falls down. You can pretty much do Matilda stuff, but nothing flying. So things have to just sort of like shoot up. I'm talking cheap powers. Wouldn't that be fun if that was your power? Mm. It's just a really shit power. Just like it has to be a, like it look like it's a low budget power. <laughs> like you can do a great stuff. You can read minds, but you know. It has to look fun. like that's on string. Yeah. Reading the minds on string. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, once once they meet, they are just all in on one another. All in. Which I think is, again, you've got plans for the day ahead. Yes. I'm not no. stopping for my twin. Here's the thing. Yeah, no. I mean, if I saw someone like me that looks very much like me in the store, I probably wouldn't chat to them. I'd be a bit weirded out. I wouldn't do it. I w- I'd give them a look and be like, that was odd. I'm going to tell one person and then it's forgotten. I'm also of the mind that if you walked past your like identical twin, mm-hmm. you wouldn't notice because you would see yourself differently to how you would actually yeah. look. I think your perception I got to tell you, different. A, a different hairstyle, I've lost it. I have no idea who that person is. You know? Oh, absolutely. If my twin had like like slutty bangs, you know, I've got no idea, you know? I'd notice them immediately. Of course like, you Oscar would. with slutty bangs. All in on this one. Good. Get this guy on the podcast. <laughs> Finally, some goddamn pizzazz from him. He's been he's been had luckluster bangs for weeks. <laughs> it's just slutty not... bangs, and they won't make me watch Twitches. You're in. <laughs> he's like here's Twitches too. Also, I've got some bangs for you. The movie also has some fantastic transitions. Really wonky, old fashioned transitions. Yeah, they go. Okay, we're gonna do the spinny frame thing, and we're gonna have a sound effect for that mm. constantly. Whoop. Yeah, they do like the curtain one. They do like the Smashing together. They do um, one that sort of shrinks and gets bigger again, so it's like a woo. Oh yeah, it's like a <laughs> pretty good, right? I know. I was I was saying to you, I think this would improve modern media. Yeah, I can't think of a wacky transition for a while. I think PowerPoint really took a lot of the wind out of their sails, mm. which is a shame. Uh, I think people saw it as a cheap uh, transition, but it's not. It's a very powerful tool. I think if you're watching Kate Winslet's Lee mm. and every time she took a photo, this transition happened in the movie, yeah. that would make it really powerful. Oh, totally. If Gladiator 2 doesn't end with like the, uh, I don't know, the, the the arena sort of, the end fights, and then they do like a wop, 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 and then we're in the, um, the, 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 the Emperor's Palace, you know, I think that would add to Denzel's performance. That's so, just me. I, it's my understanding that Robert Zemeckis's movie here, the camera does not move. The transitions like this do occur <laughs> all through the film every time they need to age. What a crazy... He's just like, listen, we actually didn't have the power of editing. Well, sorry, we did have the power of editing, so we really used it. We couldn't change frame. We really needed you to be... I think that would actually make <laughs> the next scene feel fresh and new. It would. Because you'd be like, whoa, what the hell was that? And we're in a living room? Okay. What the fuck's going on? But it should change the tagline to be like, people love life. Transitions <laughs> happened here. <laughs> <laughs> oh god do we do that on the podcast yeah I think so oh, I go to the cinema right now if you, get, <laughs> if you let me if you let me head here I, I'm so keen on here so keen. it's just, like an hour 40 yeah I just because I it feels like everyone's praising like the dinosaur stuff that starts great and then the drama it is oh, my favourite thing is like every Facebook mom has commented on like an event cinema thing being like you should catch here and all of them are like I saw it and it moved me <laughs> <laughs> oh it's a mum movie yeah. you know it's a movie mum yeah. It Ironically, it moved them, yeah. but the camera never does. And that's the thing. Here's the thing about cinema. It's a still uh, medium. Yeah. You don't want to move the camera. Do you reckon like people who are really pushing the boundaries of cinema watch stuff like that from such incredible filmmakers of the day and be like, what the fuck are you doing? He, he's he gone... No, because his main bag is just right. I want my... What I love is is technology and I don't care if it's untested. I'm going to jump straight into that water and drag whatever the fuck I bring up. And then you just got to, and it's pretty gone. It's cheaper. We just have Tom Hanks still. So we can work on the CG. It's like, then we'll do it still. There was like a Letterboxd interview where the person from Letterboxd was like, Hey, Robert Zemeckis, there's two of your movies in the top 250 movies on Letterboxd. And he was, it, the look he gave was like, Only two? Carl, here's the thing. We've been in Twitch land the whole time. And by Twitch land, I mean the real world. You mean Toronto? Toronto, Twitch land. <laughs> We need to go back to our, our old castle and what's happening here? Things are going pretty spooky, okay? Here's the thing. It's a CGI castle. It just looks like Legend of Zelda on the Wii. <laughs> I really can't. I think I painted a perfect picture. It's even got the big uh, black and gr- uh, red cloud. Oh, I forgot that. that yeah, you are right. There really is just Zelda iconography. Yeah, it's all it is. Or Zelda ripped this off. I think Zelda ripped this off. Nintendo went, saw Twitches. They went, those Bastards have nailed it. Because even the creepy hands and the faces, they've taken that. They definitely wrote down Nintendo Twitch and somebody went and wiped <laughs> it off and did Switch. <laughs> <laughs> Once we finish this goddamn Wii, we are nailing it, okay? Imagine being like, oh, they're both good. Just somebody at Nintendo sitting back being like, oh, caught a movie on Disney Channel last night. <laughs> There's going to be some changes at this company. <laughs> 
Uh, I do love that when um, the two sisters do go to the castle, it is very much just like a random mansion in Toronto. Yes, it's got this vibe of like, oh, the walls look a bit European. It's so modern. It's got uh, terracotta tiles <laughs> around it. I assume every time there's a pool to the left. Just there's, like a, there's like a Bunnings lounge set just out of frame. You're just like, well, that's just silly. But the... <laughs> there's like a modern's butler's pantry on stage and you're like, okay, sure. There's double glazed windows, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah think- just a stove cooker there's <laughs> an induction top there's a bunch of Ikea furniture in the corner but we actually get introduced to two things one uh, I guess all doors lead to this world what is this world <sighs> I don't know. I don't know why the door also comes in like from the sky. Oh, I love that. I love the door transition. But why? Because constantly they open the door and it's like a really close up of them and they go back to the door, go, ha, oh, we're safe. And they go, uh oh. <laughs> and then do the biggest crash zoom outside, go, we're in this place. Um, the Bakers of Adjustment Bureau lost their shit. <laughs> they're like, a whole movie on this. <laughs> they don't know what doors they're going through. That's a film. We meet the Vizier and uh, they're. The queen of this castle, Carl. Yeah, so the queen is really their mum. Yeah. She hasn't seen her kids in a very long time. Mm-hmm. She's trapped here due to the darkness coming in. Yeah. Is the darkness sentient? Ooh, I'd say it's more of an extension of the person controlling the darkness. I, who who could it be? Is that scheming vizier? No, no, no. <laughs> the no. only suspect? <laughs> it's re- the only? It's that or the dad. And like the, the, He's not coming back. The, the, the tennis dad, I mean. Oh, right. Well, yeah. they haven't paid enough for him to have a talking role. No, of course not. So this scheming vizier is just like, I don't know what's going on. There's black goo outside. It's pretty handsome though, isn't it? <laughs> I quite like it. <laughs> but not too much because I'm not the villain. It's also the guy from Better Call Saul. Who's not he's given, brilliant. Who's, brilliant in Better Call Saul. He's so good in Better Call Saul. I don't think he's given much here, but it's given like one line right at the end where he's like, da. At the end when he gets to be like, a, I'm a like twirling my yes. mustache villain, he comes into true form and he is brilliant. Yeah. I would love a movie b- with him and the one from Shit's Creek. It's crazy. I like Not that the other actors aren't like, you know, nailing it, but you just kind of go... You got like little, you've you've take you've made a mountain out of that, that tiny little line. So it's just good stuff. Yeah, there's just there's some writing in here where uh, some of the lead actors have been given such word vomit to read, right? Like a full like four paragraphs, but not as a monologue, just as like them replying to the other person, but without them having to talk. So they're just sort of caught in a round Which of dialogue. Which is odd because I don't I don't think it would have been it would have been fine. But the filmmakers gone well. They actually nailed it in one take, so we might just show the whole thing every time we cut it. Cost a bit of money, so we're just gonna save money and just show, show that full shot. We didn't record anybody else. No. We didn't get reactionary shots. We we're didn't shooting get, on film. <laughs> we didn't get coverage. Okay, we got one shot of the day. No editing. You never get coverage. No. Coverage has always come back to haunt people. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I'm not entirely sure how they fill the runtime. No. They've got powers, but they're not really together. They are getting along, but they're not really getting along. We're sort of fed information every 15 minutes. Yeah. So we kind of go, should we go back to the house? We've done a little montage of spells. Let's go back to the house. They go, ah, you draw, do you? I do draw. Okay, well let's talk about drawing for a while. Uh, the pen- bad drawings of me. Well, no, let's just let's just talk about pencils for a bit. You know, I love lead-based ones. Two uh, B is up there with my sort of vibe. Uh, graphite's good. Uh, well, let's talk about what you draw. Okay, you got some hair and you got hands. That's good. They make up a person, and that's good stuff. Oh, look at that. That's me. That's crazy. They're, that's not you. Don't be ridiculous. It's just a moon-shaped necklace on her. And what, yours is more of a crescent moon, you know? It wouldn't be a whole thing. It's just ridiculous. They really pad out the runtime and just nothing conversations. We. I, it also really threw me, but I think this is a day. Yeah. It's a long day. What time do they meet in the morning? That's well, got to be sub 8 a.m. I think they've got a party at night time, okay? Yep. She, arrives er, she arrives late to her party, but it's the preamble. So I reckon she's got there for four. So they've done a whole shopping day, done a shift at work, been fired from that job, Mm. had a spell montage, gone to a different universe, come back, and then have had to have a big falling out, and then have gone back to their separate ways. Because they have lunch in the middle. Yeah. They have lunch. And it's a lazy lunch. It's a a a, lazy. It's a burger and fries, and they don't like mustard or pickles or something like that. Yes. I don't know if it's a twin thing, and I think we haven't talked about twins. I think because uh, the two sisters uh, just look a bit too different, their hairstyles are different, Mm. I go, well, they're not twins. If they look similar, I'd be creeped out, Mm. because twins are pretty weird. Well, let's talk about it right now. Every twin I've met is a freak. Yeah, totally. Don't trust them. 
Not in the slightest. No, no. I think they, and, I, and here's the thing. I don't think they're witches. I do think they're just twins. And I think twins are given this power. Because twins always have that, that sort of vibe that they've got. Mm. They know something. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They know all about everything. Yeah. They, they do have a bond. Yeah. <laughs> they really do. They do have a weird bond. Yeah. They do like have this sort of, I don't know. I just imagine they kiss when mm. they go to bed and it's weird. I might throw out, I don't know if I've met a twin. Oh, you. here's the thing. Okay. Then you probably haven't. I've met adult twins and they're odd. Oh. Yeah. I just think they're so entwined. And quite frankly, I do actually agree that with the second they met and they were immediately together, you go, yeah, that's all twins. These two twins lived together, which I thought was crazy. They were in their 30, they were 35, really short, you know? And they would just, you, they'd sneak up on you. They'd go, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, they did share a lot of the same similarities. Maybe, th- maybe this film's nailed it, actually. Are you a twin? Let us know at askwwtpodcast at gmail.com. And uh, if you have any uh, powers, you know, we want to say, uh, uh, honestly, if you're a twin, we actually do need both listeners. So, you know what? That's right. We, make sure the other one's listening. Yeah, we take it all back, uh, unless you're not a twin, in which case we stand by what we said. <laughs> oh, God, it's so, it's so good to be impartial. Yeah. Here's the thing. This podcast is so neutral. Every film we've given a two and a half, and I do not stand by that. I've never liked a movie, nor have I ever hated one. No, and anything one. I've said on this podcast... Is not fact. Oh yeah, don't get me wrong. Do not hold us against. Do not hold us accountable for anything we've ever said. Okay, we do not believe in it. Unless, I lie. unless we do, unless we do. You Wouldn't know? it be crazy if we revealed we were twins? Wouldn't it be crazy if we were brothers? Wouldn't imagine what a twist it would be for the listener if we were related by blood? There's some podcasts where I think they keep that hidden. Because yeah. I think people are like, what the hell is this, huh? Yeah. Two brotherless? Get out of here. Two brotherless? Brotherless? Two brotherless? Wow, mocking me, huh? God damn, mm. you younger brother, you. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta you gotta be rude to the older brother. <laughs> well, I jumped in it quickly. I'm now the older brother. Yeah, hell and you. Crazy to age yourself up, but I got younger, baby. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Guys, I'm coming into I'm coming into my late twenties and I'm unhappy. Oh, that's fine. Don't worry. You've got a, a thriving podcast. You know, every twenty year old's dream and every thirty year old's nightmare. Oh god, this thing's got to wrap it up by thirty. <laughs> I swear to God. Don't worry. There's a gun under the shelf. Just check under there. <laughs> um, on their little on their little date, they uh, decide that they can work out how to use their powers. A yes. lot of them just revolve around drinks. They can either make a drink blow up or a drink uh, smash. Yeah. It's uh, many water-based stuff. Yeah. They're kind of waterbenders. They're very quick at going, we did that, we did that. Are we twitches mm. and brand themselves? And I think that's pretty cool. Strong branding, here's the thing. I mean, yes, the film's called Twitches. I remember this very details of a child going, <gasps> Twitches, that's great. That's really good. They've nailed that name. They are twins and mm. they are witches. Uh, eventually, they, they have their little falling out. Mm. They separate for their birthdays. Well, their main issue is the fact they're like, hey... This the, the fairy odd kid parents go, hey, you know the, that that place you went to, that's just like totally gonna die unless you guys do something incredibly dangerous. And the poor one goes, well, I've got nothing to lose. I'm very poor. <laughs> this isn't even the worst day of my life. Oh, how cruel! She's also lost another mother, which is great. She's an orphan twice. The rich one goes, listen, I live in a mansion and I have loving parents, so I actually don't want to sacrifice anything. So you're on your own. And I don't know really how they resolve this. I know they said we're sisters but she's very much like come on you just found out about this random place i just think give it up you know i know you have nothing to come back to but this isn't a life to live you know don't bother don't bother. Don't even bother no it's <laughs> i would like to know what's happened in her life that this isn't even the worst day well i think it's the mother dying her mother well because because get this she got two mums she got two mums and the other one died missed that yeah completely missed that but i gotta tell you Meeting your creepy overseer who's been like, I've been looking at you forever. I watched uh, your first mother give you up and I saw the second mother die and I've been just hovering around here waiting to pinch you up so you can come save my castle. Imagine finding out you'd been watched forever. It's odd. Forever. Yeah. Like, of course that's a bad day. Yeah. What do you mean you watched me watch my mum die? And they're like, <laughs> yeah. We call that one on camera. We didn't know watch it and laugh at you. You know? saw the life leave her eyes. And guess what? There's no afterlife. And yeah. if there was, she went to hell. Because I saw what she did and she wasn't a good person. Oh, yeah. Big sinner. And for our rules, we've got weird rules, you know? If you use thread, you know, if you're sewing, big sin in our culture, mm. okay? It is... People into pies. Straight to hell. Of course, of course. You know, they're not even gluttonous. It's just the pie is a bad vibe. Unless you've done uh, like a, a like a plat over the top of the pie, straight to heaven. Oh, here's the thing. 
I love doing a plats, can never get a plat. You good. can't get a plat. It's good. a fucking nightmare. You go to hell. Well, of course. You could, you've got to get a good if you want to go to heaven. Well, of course, I'm trying. Here's the thing though, you can't try and test. You know, you have to nail it first go and then only nail it. Nail in the coffin. <laughs> the, the devil might as well drag it down then. <laughs> what is What do you mean this? you attempted a plat on a pie and you didn't nail it on the first <laughs> go? Get down here, tortured forever. You're disgusting. The devil does not want to do anything with you. Just get out of here. Who said you could even try? <laughs> But here's the thing, you nail it? Oh my god, eternity up there in the golden skies? Yeah, Take me up! It's a high risk, because here's the thing, if you don't give it a go, you live in limbo. And that's fine, limbo's just okay, you know? It's okay. There's no pie in limbo. No, it's sort of like living in uh, Toronto, I guess, wherever they're from. Whatever whatever the strange places that looks cool and warm. Yeah, it did look neutral, didn't it? It looks so neutral. It looked like Australia, honestly. They were walking through, I'm like, that just looks like Hyde Park. I know, it looks like a place where things are going okay. Yeah, it's just, it's just... We're just, we're Toronto, and that's our motto. Maybe we should go on tour in Toronto. Most of our listener base is in Canada. No, no, no. It's mainly in, uh, I believe, where they have... Wow, you're quick on your feet tonight. Um... (laughs) Damn, that really backfired. (laughs) They eat a dry cake. (laughs) Oh, and she also gets caught in a fence. (laughs) Oh yeah, there's <laughs> set like, up the set up the scene. Oh, it's so good. It pretty much, it's like the Bill and Ted gag. But she kind of goes, the film kind of goes. Okay, we need you to look dramatically over a fence. Yeah, put your hand over there and look longingly away. And the 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 camera pans out and goes, oh fuck, we missed our fence. Cut close, cut close. It's just a big gap in between. It really undercuts the moment. She could walk around. Big walk around. And honestly, it comes across that this mopey one is also lazy. Well, here's the thing. She's poor and therefore mm. lazy. And that's right. That's mm. what, I, I, We stand by that. If you're lazy, you lose your mum and you're poor and you've got no powers. Okay? The wealth will rise up, Carl. They'll rise up. What a great analogy for life. It is kind of, though, isn't it? Yeah. God, it really... She's not had a good run and as a result is punished for it. Sometimes you can't have a good life if luck just isn't on your side. Yeah. <sighs> Damn. <laughs> that wasn't that deep. Sorry? <laughs> what? Then why am I crying? <laughs> Sometimes you're unlucky, and that's no bueno. And that's Carl's comment. Sometimes if luck's not on your side, give up. <laughs> Things are getting pretty serious, because the darkness has come in. Yeah. It's not only ruining the party, I believe it has taken the cleaner. Well, it sort of home alones the house for <laughs> like five minutes. The cleaner's running around setting up traps and stuff, but this, the, the cleaner's no match for this fog. The fog's going to nail her. The fog's can, can go through walls. It can go under chairs. It's an absolute nightmare. It grabs her and there's absorbs her. Really fucks her around. Uses her own tricks upon her. She's like, sets up like, oh, I'll, I'll close the door and lock the door. The smoke smacks down the door. Makes it go like flies. It's just a nightmare for this person. God, what a horrid tale for this one, huh? Kevin McAllister being like, "Oh God, I'm no match for fog." <laughs> <laughs> Coming, to, going through the bricks that are flying at it. Grabs his head, puts his mouth onto the doorknob when it burns because that's what he deserves. And fog gets his revenge. Fog always ends up on top. Joe Pesci would make a great fog. Joe Pesci is fog. fog. <laughs> <laughs> Doing that in the, the new Home Alone <laughs> starring <laughs> with Kevin McAllister. Who plays Kevin McAllister? Uh, Macaulay Culkin yeah. The new Home Alone starring Macaulay Culkin As Kevin McAllister And Joe Pesci <laughs> as Fog <laughs> This it, New Year's It would be a fun redo They're kind of like that's right Joe Pesci's back He died in Home Alone 4 But he's, but he's back in a big way This time he's an ethereal ghost And he's going to get his fucking revenge He's going he's gonna to make that kid pay For what he did to him People don't realise for many years Joe Pesci sat on that Irishman set Arms crossed saying I gave up Fog For this mm. For this role So Marty could live out his dream mm. Well what about mine Marty I was called for Fog I was asked to step up <laughs> And I didn't. <laughs> Al Pacino's just like, I'm Hoffa. I'm Hoffa. Uh, I'm Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> and he nails Hoffa. <laughs> and uh, Robert De Niro's like, am I young? And then hobbles. <laughs> yeah, that whole film's just like, oh, what a wasted life. Uh, all I got to be was a cool g- mobster. That's what I took away from the whole film. Give it a go. Yeah. Give mobbing a go. Yeah. Here's, I'd, my takeaway was if your daughter grows up to be a banker, don't bother talking to her. <laughs> 
<laughs> she picked a poor line of work. She could have been a mobster like you. She should have followed her steps because she saw the life and it's weird she get, didn't didn't take it on board. It's weird. I love the Irishman. Check it out. Until if you're ever given the ultimatum to kill your friend, take it. <laughs> <laughs> take it with a heartbeat and also get the wet bread they always dip in the wine. God, I tried that. It wasn't very nice. Do you remember oh, yeah. that in the yeah. film? They but that's because they don't have teeth. No, they're doing that like in their forties when they're de-aged. So, uh, but I think in their mind they thought maybe they didn't have teeth. Oh, they just let Mal- Miles like, oh, we totally forgot to make them not do wet bread. We should, guys, we're gonna de-age you. Ah, oh, they're already eating the wet bread. We'll put it in. It's Italian. <laughs> Marty, not telling them what age they are in any <laughs> one scene. You just gotta gauge how old you're meant. To- That's why he was so old kicking it. He was like, man, you nailed being twenty-one. Twenty-one. <laughs> I looked. So, I was kicking so poorly. Why didn't you tell me, Marty? I thought when I was sitting in this retirement home, I was a spry nineteen-year-old. You're telling me this is the end of my life? Oh God! I was watching. Uh, I don't know what the kids watch. Rick and Morty on the TV. I was really in tune with the character. The twitches are back, girl. Oh, the twitches are back in a big way. Mm. The darkness is coming in. <laughs> The darkness, and honestly, it, and it starts killing. Yeah, we lose our fairly odd parents. Yeah, pretty upsetting. Pretty aggressive. I thought we had lost them forever. Yeah, they'll come back. They'll come back. They'll come easy. back. They're fine. I, I gotta tell you, this fog feels very much like, um, you know, Voldemort gets destroyed by a baby, mm. which you know, I, I think love's doing a lot of heavy lifting. I don't think love's that powerful of a, of a spell. I, I wish, I wish people would be like, you know what? I think lust. Or maybe greed could, you know, I think it overtake gluttony. Love. Yeah, gluttony's a way bigger bad drug. Then when they're holding each other's arms, being like a fully baked ham, <laughs> a fully baked honey ham, souffle. I'm talking a lot of McDonald's a night after a big night, a big kebab, a very large pizza, a pig with an apple in its mouth. <laughs> Do you eat the apple? You decide. I'm talking a chocolate river, and you're just bathing in it. It's hot as hell, and that sends off the strip. That ruin. I just is love that important? You you know, really? Mm. Any yeah. of the other, any of the, wait, hang on. Is love one of the deadly sins? No, lust is. With <laughs> <laughs> an L and you, you think lust and love are the same thing? They're one of the same. Here's the thing though. Raph is totally love, you know? Oh my yeah. God. Them holding each other being like, I fucking hate you. <laughs> and the darkness is like, no, ah. you were meant to use love. <laughs> <laughs> I was meant to teach you a lesson. Oh, oh no. no. God, sister. Now I consume all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that at all. I, I, I you know, I, I think a sister's love is a very complex thing. And I got to tell you, I just don't think after this couple of days, they've had a big fight. I think it should be a bit more vile. It hasn't been a couple of days. Yeah. It's been, it's been less than, it's been 12 I hours. Think it's 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. is the timeline. Yeah, I think they should still be a bit more bitter, you know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'd be like, look, I think you're kind of catty. And the other one would be like, you're fucking mopey. <laughs> you took my shirt, you know? That's my fucking top and you fucking yeah. took it. Well, it's, I'm poor. <laughs> Give me some of your clothes. You got a lot. Also, shout out to one of the one of them's like roommate who uh, says at one stage, sorry I was being my usual petty and jealous self. We can go mock people. It, it, here's the thing. And like, you can relate. When you're poor, you mock. Mm. Because it's all you got, you know? Other than like sit, uh, five of the seven deadly sins, it's that or mock, you know? You really gotta, you gotta drag people down. When you get taken by the darkness, where do you think you go? <sighs> I, I think just to wherever the bottom of this castle is. I assume there's like a very crappy village at the bottom. And it's not like a hell, but it's just not nice, you know? I imagine if there's like a peasant, you'd be like, oh, it's a bit shit. What if it turned out, while the darkness was scary on the outside, beautiful on the inside, and they're like, it's actually... It's, it's an allegory. Nirvana in there. Yeah, it's an allegory for books, huh? Mm. Read your books. Sometimes they're scary on the outside, inside is a lot of knowledge. It's just a lot of hands moving around, and they're like, it's what's on the inside that counts. <laughs> hands. <laughs> <laughs> the hands rip you apart, though. Here's the thing. You can be ugly on the outside and inside. I hated the hands. Yeah, the hands were a lot. The animated nailed hands. I gotta tell you, Zelda does the hands as well. It's fucking really? t- it's terrifying. Wow. One of the most terrifying monsters in the thing. I'm never going to play Zelda out of fear it may ruin the twitches for me. Girl, they go back to the old uh, castle. And they defeat the vizier. Wow. Who knew he would be the villain? And it is a funny, it's just an empty castle. They're just like, well, there's one of us. And What's it's- he getting? 
This kingdom? Nobody's there. I don't know. It's Well, here's the thing. It's a lovely property in the middle of LA, so you got to check it out. You well, know? It's, just, it's just the middle of Toronto. He's like, this real estate in Toronto could be worth millions in decades. It's 2005. Guess what? I'm going to sell the place in three years' time, make a tiny bit of profit. That's right. I haven't got hindsight. I can only see a second into the future. See, three years in the future be a lot easier. We haven't even discovered a young Sean Mendes <laughs> who is from Canada and will surely bring a lot of tourism dollars. Is JB has he been discovered? No, he hasn't been discovered. Wow, no. Ca- Canada Justin was struggling. Bieber's here soon. They were really hanging on. There's to... a young Ryan Reynolds before he's Deadpool. Oh yeah, you've got him in uh, waiting. See him waiting at this point. And two pizza guys and a broke girl. Oh god, or Canada two broke was girls and a pizza guy. It's something close. like that. Two girls, one cup. I believe you're watching. What you think about? Crass. You're crass. I'm a crass guy. What can I say? So goddamn crass. Uh, everything's fine. Yeah. They be, they defeat it all. They defeat it with love. Which with is love. Nice. I thought I wish it'd be fun if they did more spells. Again, the budget really couldn't permit. They really just kind of did a CGI paint, made a couple of workers uh, go into drag, and then uh, froze. What a day! What a day! What a day! I got to tell you, I was a little bit moved when they were like, "And I love my sister." Yeah. That was nice. That was nice. That, <laughs> that was, was nice. That was nice. They've gone for a journey. It wasn't much of a journey, but it was it was enough that that hit. Yeah. And I think that's why Twitches get five stars. We're starting to do that now, Carl. <laughs> what are you going to get? <laughs> Another f- a Carl five and an Oscar five? I'll give you a thumbs up. Whatever real, uh, whatever, whatever. Point uh, systems. Yeah, we can steal. How about four stars? I despise that the most. Oh, I hate the four star ones. Yeah. Just don't. Don't. I just, it's tough because a two star. I seems guess mean, but I guess that's, that's a equal to two and a half, which seems pointless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you have to go on either side, but then three seems like too much of a power. Like three out of four, that's pretty good. That feels like you're like seventy five percent. Yeah, it's probably a big recommend. Yeah. And normally they just. But I'm not going to go. They're not going to be like, well, that guy gave it two and a half stars <laughs> out of four, so I want to go. If somebody gives something two and a half out of four, I still don't want to see it. No. But if the, somebody gives like, what would that be equal to? A three and a bit, like a three and a quarter. Yeah, I'd go and see that. What is that? That's sixty percent. Yeah, so I'd, go three and, I'd go and see something for three stars. Yeah. It's a dreadful system. It's an awful system. I and think it, you can't do half stars if you're doing four stars. No. Because then you're just doing one out of eight. But then what's the, what's the point to do one out of four? I don't know. It's odd. Would you do a thumbs up, thumbs down? I don't like that either, really. I think there's just too much nuances. Like I like when the conversation is listened to. <laughs> Like us? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing. If you haven't worked out if this is a recommend or not recommend yet, that's on you. And yeah, maybe we didn't talk about the film or critique anything or give anything <laughs> away about how we felt. But again, that's an L on you. Here's the thing. We've been, you've been listening. You know what this is. You know what the vibe is. And quite frankly, you, you know, know we've the- given up. It's been four years. Fuck off. Girl, who would watch Twitches? Um... I don't know. I think twins, witches, anyone alive in the early 2000s that owned the Disney Channel. You've got a good Venn diagram going. I, I was me. told that maybe the two lead actresses in this were famous or mattered because of a thing called Sister Sister. I don't know. I guess if you're a fan of that. Yes, they were They were big in the 90s and then they sort of fell off and then they came back for this and everyone went, wow. And then they did it again and then they hate each other. Yes, yes. Yeah. We, Yeah. I got to tell you, honestly, I actually, I actually think if I don't know how big her role is on Shit's Creek, mm. but if you are that big of a fan of that actress that's on Shit's Creek, and you actually want to see her chew up a fucking movie, th- watch this. Yeah, I think she'll so. steal steal your heart. Oscar, who would watch Twitches again? If you love Better Call Saul and you really want to see an actor chew up a scene, check out this one. That's right, we're doing it for two actors doing. I'd say they have what three percent of the of the runtime, maybe less. Yeah, maybe less. So, together they have three percent, so yeah. they each have one and a half. I am always I am always amazed at these films just kind of doing nothing because you kind of summarize it. You kind of go. You just kind of did nothing. It is really, it's funny because I guess the brief would be at Disney going, hey, you've got to fill 90 minutes. Yeah. Uh, but we've only got a budget for the first third and the last third. Mm. So the middle, you've just got to pad. A lot of interiors, a lot of, interiors, lot of yeah. chatting. Yeah, no second is- unit, just just interiors and pad. Yeah. 
And this one doesn't do it well. <laughs> Carl, we live in Australia, so things are pretty... It's actually getting pretty hot. If anything, this room is boiling. But you know what isn't boiling? Somewhere, I don't know, 44,000 uh, kilometers away from us. That's right, in Christmas in many other places. Carl, what are we doing next week? We're going to go to the cinema. We're going to take out our Voss water bottles. Mm-hmm. We're going to pee in them a little bit. And we're going to be late for the film. Because that's how The Rock would want us to enjoy Red One. This $300 million uh, budgeted film? Was it something like that? Coming to Amazon soon. <laughs> is making not a lot of money. So check it out, guys. Because we will be out. checking out very soon. Thank you for listening.